Hey my friend, today I am trying the brand new Strymon Blue Sky version 2. So you're probably wondering what's the difference between the version 1 and the version 2 and I'm gonna talk and play in this video to show you the differences. So first of all, what's new? A new chip for more processing power. I'm not an engineer and I trust that it's gonna be even better on the version 2. And then there is full MIDI and expression pedal implementation and an U USB-C port. I guess this is the main reason why they wanted to update the pedal because it was released more than a decade ago and now most of their pedals have full MIDI implementation and expression and everything that you would want more uh, from this pedal and so I guess they said if we were to add those functions, why not improve the pedal even further? So that's why they added one more knob and they changed things around. So you see the version one on the left has five knobs and the version two has six knobs and the new knob is a dedicated shimmer knob. On the first version, it was just a fixed shimmer mode. So you couldn't really dial in the amount of shimmer that you wanted, but now you have a dedicated knob for it which is really cool. And then it's the same thing for the modulation. You had a mod mode, which was fixed modulation. And now you have a switch with th uh, three intensities, uh, off, light, and deep. It's the pretty much the same design than on a Strymon Dig, where you have the three types of uh, delay on the left, and then the three types of modulation on the right. So I think it gives you much more flexibility to use the modulation and the shimmer the way you want it uh, on the pedal, instead of having fixed modes. I think it makes a lot of sense. And uh, the other thing that I really like about the pedal is the new mono stereo switch on the back. Because since they needed to add a jack for the expression pedal, now you cannot have two ins and two outs because uh, they would need to have a larger pedal um, if they wanted to do that. So now you have two ins and outs on the version one, but now one in, which is a stereo in, and two outs. And in the past, you had to unscrew the pedal and move a tiny jumper inside the pedal to go from uh, mono or stereo in, and you had to use a... Um, a splitter cable like this one uh, to use it in stereo. Now you still need that cable if you want to use it in stereo in, but you don't have to unscrew the pedal anymore. It's just a little switch that you flip on the back. So uh, it's uh, really a big time saver, especially if you want to move it around on your pedal board, or if like me, you're making demos and it's just a nightmare to unscrew every time that you want to change things around. So uh, those are the main new things on the pedal. And now let's try uh, some different sounds uh, with one and another. So let's start by comparing the same modes on the two pedals. Let's start with a plate style with the knobs exactly at the same place on both versions. That was version one, now version two. Let's try the room on both version one. And version two. And finally, the spring. So once again, version spring, version one. And spring version two. Mm -hmm. 
So now let's talk what we can do more with the version 2. Let's say I want a modulated sound uh, on a plate setting. In the first version, it's going to sound like this. It might be a bit too much for your taste. It's like you're adding a chorus, in a sense, on top of the reverb. But if I want to play the same thing, a plate, and then I have the switch of modulation. So if I put it at, at a light setting, it's going to be, to my taste, it's going to be more tasteful, more subtle a little bit. <laughs> And if you want more, you can go to deep setting where it's going to add the modulation even before the reverb tank, I think. So let's compare with the first one once again with the deep setting. So it's very similar. So it's like, in a sense, the mod mode on version one was like a deep setting, but now you have a lighter setting that you can use on this one, which is nice. But the biggest thing right here is the shiver knob that we can use. So if we stay on a plate mode, and once again, I go to shimmer mode on this one, that was the biggest limitation on the version one. It's like a fixed shimmer. It's never the amount that you want. <laughs> So the only thing that I could do to get it out of the way, in a sense, was to use the, the high dampening. So if I do that, now it's like more in the background because I'm killing the highs of the shimmer. But now maybe I don't have enough reverb to my taste. So it's like you're, the mix knob and the high uh, knob are fighting against each other to get the shimmer that you want. But if you, on the version 2, you can dial in the amount, the precise amount that you want of shimmer. So I could play. And then if that's the precise amount that I want, then I can fine tune the lows and the highs if I want. So generally, I don't ha want my shimmers to be too piercing. So I'm going to add more lows, less highs. So this one is not like in the way of what I'm playing. And if I want more, then I can add more like this. And especially if you want to create like big soundscapes by putting the mix knob all the way up where it kills the uh, guitar signal and you only hear the reverberated signal. Now it's cool to have the amount of shimmer that you want with that knob right here. So with lots of decay, let's say I want to create soundscapes, I'm going to do that on both pedals. So now maybe it's too much, but I don't want to have less mix because I want to have this like 100% wet reverb. It's just a little shimmer in the background. Which... On the other pedal, if I go full mix knob with the DK like this and the shimmer setting, it's gonna be super piercing and I have to put the highs all the way down. But it's still very, very present, but now I can go subtle like this. See, 
that's, that sounds so much deeper. Really, really cool. So the shimmer knob and the mod uh, switch are helping a lot to get even more flexibility on the version two. So if you are looking to get the blue sky, this is the best moment to do it. It's an improved version. You're gonna get so much more from this pedal, more flexibility. I guess the only thing that I would have liked on the pedal is the ability to have secondary functions like other pedals where you hold both switches and maybe we could control the mod modulation even more where you could control the speed and the depth of the modulation that's maybe what I would want uh, more on the pedal but I guess they might want to simplify their pedals by adding the knobs more on the front and not hidden functions in the pedal so that it's more accessible for uh, all types of players and I really understand if that's the reason if you're looking to create soundscapes I mean you're looking at the Strymon Blue Sky you might want to use shim and create soundscapes with your guitar. I have a free course for you. It's called a beginner's guide to ambient guitar. I go through all the techniques that you need to play ambient guitar music, how to create drones, how to create volume swells, uh, ambient guitar swells, and a great clean tone on your amp, and how to start looping and making your, more, uh, your own arrangements. So uh, if you're looking for that, it's the first link in the description box below. It's totally for free. It's my gift to you for watching my videos. So check out my free course and I'm gonna see you soon. Until next time, au revoir.